first at nine. This is Other There and Now, 24 7. Reaffirms the importance of children in development. University student protests met with tear gas by the police. Prime Minister welcomes India towards port development in Trincomalee. And outgoing President Obama gives some advice to President-elect Trump. It's Thursday, the 19th of January, 2017. Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, for making us a part of your evening. Uh, I'm Mahesh Shani, and this is the news tonight on Other Dharana 24-7. We begin, as usual, with the local news. President Maitripala Sirisena says that school children will play a pragmatic role in fulfilling social responsibilities towards sustainable development. He made these remarks participating at the inauguration of Sustainable Development School Societies in Digana today. The Sustainable Development School Societies program launched under the guidance of the Presidential Secretariat and Ministry of Education with supervision of Provincial Education Ministries. President Sirisena presented guidelines of the Sustainable Development School Societies program to Minister of Education Akhila Viraj Karyavasam at the occasion. World powers who give us major advice are the ones who bring harm to human society by causing global warming. Big cities of these nations now face the consequences of extreme air pollution. Therefore, it is important to work towards protecting our environment before Sri Lanka too faces the consequences of environmental pollution. That is why we are focusing on you to take charge of the mission and to spread this important message. Police use water cannons and tear gas to disperse university students engaged in a protest march today. The protest was organized by the Inter-University Students Federation based on several demands. The protest march, which commenced at the University of Visual and Performing Arts, created severe traffic congestion in the Kolpiti and town hall areas this afternoon. They protested against the site and private university in Malabe, while also demanding an end to what they called a sale of education. The protesters were seen marching towards Bambalapitiya through Town Hall and Tummula Junctions. Later, police used water cannons and tear gas to disperse the protesters who attempted to enter the presidential secretariat premises. Prime Minister Rani Wickremesinghe held talks with his counterpart, 
Nawaz Sharif on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos today. During the discussion, Pakistani Prime Minister has invited Premier Vikramasinghe to visit Pakistan in order to strengthen bilateral relations between the two countries. Meanwhile, in Davos, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe met the Executive Director of World Food Programme, Ethrin Kassin. The discussion centered on challenges faced by Sri Lanka due to the impending drought. Ethrin Kassin has said that the WFP is ready to provide aid and assistance to Sri Lanka in order to face the drought. Kassin also appreciated the Sri Lankan government for its contribution to the World Food Programme. The WFP Executive Director announced that she will be visiting Sri Lanka on the 10th of February. Well, at a time when Indian media is getting increasingly anxious about China's investments in the Hambantha report, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe tells NDTV that India is welcome to come and invest in the facilities around the port for which the government is setting aside land. He also clarifies that Sri Lanka has not given this land away only to the Chinese. Also, the Prime Minister said that further discussions are underway for the Indians and the Japanese to see the possibility of developing the Trincomalee port. I have suggested the Indian government, once we finish the ECTA agreement... Right. Which will, will happen when? It, it had be before in mid this year. Mid it, this year. Yeah. Because we also, we, are, we just finished the GSP plus arrangements for right. entry into EU. We are also doing two other agreements, one with Singapore, another with China. We followed by one with ASEAN and another with Japan and with Bangladesh. So we, we, are, we are covering the whole area and we become a platform for competitive value addition and a platform so for one, logistics. I am very interested in the southern hmm. states, Singapore hmm. and Sri hmm. Lanka. That will be completed already by when? No, we start talking once the agreement is signed. The agreement will be signed by mid this year, yeah. you are saying? When I am going to talk with Andhra Pradesh, with Chandrabahu Naidu, yes, yes. I am meeting him tomorrow. Right. But we started discussions there. Okay. And we want a, a, a joint venture with Andhra Pradesh Industrial Infrastructure right. Limited to provide the infra for so industrial estates, for Indians, for others, for even for Chinese. You getting a good response from India? Yes. Yeah, we, we and have this have will happen. It's not yes. a dream. And I have, now we also talk with India mm -hmm. to develop Frinkamali as the main harbour for the Bay of Bengal. That will happen? That will happen. There are no sunken costs. We don't require breakwaters. Okay. But at the moment, uh, the whole of Trincomalee is being planned out by Sabana Jurong, which is also doing Amaravati. Right. And once that plans are done, we are, and there will be large areas of tourism, then with India, and uh, hopefully Japan will also take a stake in it. And uh, uh, that means Trincomalee becomes a harbour. Indians are also interested in other projects in Sri Lanka which we are talking with them, especially in the northern area. So if a In other local stories, former COP chairman Dil Gunasekara says that the present Committee on Public Enterprises has also come to the same conclusion as he did through their report. Addressing a press briefing held at the Sri Lanka Communist Party head office in Colombo, he further stated that the president should appoint a presidential committee to investigate the Treasury bond scam. All what I have dis I discovered during the course of my in investigation has been completely confirmed by, by the Hamdurnati committee. And they have gone far beyond, I think. They got the order general to make a special investigation, which I could not do because of time. And he has gone in depth and made reports and answered every question raised by central bank officials. So now both my report and Handunetti report firmly confirmed the correctness of our in conclusions. After Ranil Vikramasinghe, new government came, the then governor central bank took a decision to stop borrowing, borrow, borrowings through the methodology of the direct system and resorted to auction system. As a result, that decision onwards, 80% of the borrowings are from the private sector and not from the public. And out of that 80%, oh, 60% have been borrowed from one single dealer, namely Governor Arjun Aloysius, that is Arjun Mahindran's daughter's husband. There is some scandal has taken place. And here the main person behind it, the former Governor Central Bank. <laughs> 
Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government Faisal Mustafa says he is ready to consider request of minorities pertaining to the delimitation report. Faisal Mustafa was responding to accusations leveled by minority parties against the delimitation report. The minister said this following an ins inspection tour in Vaunia to assess development activities carried out by local government institutions. <laughs> Meanwhile, a demonstration was held in Vaunia yesterday, expressing opposition over conclusions of the delimitation report. We did not come to one knee to divide the north and the south, instead to connect the north and the south. Today, 3,154 families are in danger. We are in danger because of the delimitation report. Earlier, the Vaunia South Divisional Secretariat Office was responsible for us. But the delimitation report has divided us into five Divisional Secretariat Officers. We have to face injustice because of this report. In the meantime, leaders of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress and EPDP summoned a special media briefing to voice their opinion over the matter. They have also decided to discuss the concerns regarding the report with Minister Faizal Mustafa. That needs to be presented on behalf of the smaller parties and uh, minority parties who are represented in parliament and outside. So we are submitting a collective uh, set of proposals. In the meantime, we also discussed the local government election reforms regarding which there are serious reservations by all of us parties. So we would like to appeal to the uh, uh, minister in charge of provincial councils and local government not to be hasty in gazetting the controversial uh, delimitation committee's uh, findings. We, before discussing with the parties concerned, we find that there are serious anomalies in the uh, law itself which creates uh, <coughs> confusion among many of us. It will also result in uh, serious injustice to minor and minority parties. Therefore, uh, we would appeal to the minister concerned not to be hasty in gazetting this controversial delimitation committee. However, Minister Mustafa had this to say about the matter. किसी से इतना श्रीमानी ना अभियाचना को मिटो वार्ता वा पराकु करने मां कटे तो कराने नहीं है नमूद मैं इल्लीम सलाका वाली मट्टे अपिसूदा नंबर बात मम्मे अस्तादी प्रकाश करना है भाई मैं इल्लीम मैं पराकु अटा किसी से इतना पदलाम क्रीम सदाचार आत्मा का नहीं सहा मरा नाइटी का वाकी मत तीनों पुलवांतर निकमण टा गैसेट करांडर है भाई अभी प्रजातंत्र वादे पाविचिकले युतुई ऐनिसा प्रजातंत्र वाद मूल धर्म अभी रखीनो ये वाकी म सिलुदिनागे माधास इधरीपत क्रीम में वारमात अभी रखीनो आके निका मम्मे आस्तादी प्रकाश On to business news now. Peace Air, a bidder to Sri Lankan Airlines, says that it has offered a bid to. Uh, bid of 5.5 billion US dollars to buy 17% stake in the national carrier and 90% share of Mihin Lanka. PCA has also made an offer to the government to purchase 80% of stake in the Mathala International Airport for 22.2 billion US dollars. Chairman of Peace Air, Garmini Vettasinger, disclosed this at a media briefing in Colombo today. We have also brought in US dollars, 5.5 billion US dollars cash into the system. We have already got the Lufthansa group and basically we have got uh, Deutsche Bank sending the SWIFT confirming the funding. We have got sent the SWIFT to NSB and for 5.5 billion. Did you know that Sri Lankan Airlines was carrying 5 million passengers? Did you all know that? Did you all know that? Per annum, did you know that? Then, did you know that they earn 1 billion dollars? Did you know that? This airline, this 7,000 qualified group of people are making 1,000 million dollars for this country. And none of us are bothering even to say thank you to them. And now, Sri Lankan Airlines is therefore making profits. They are making a lot of money. But who is siphoning all this money? The operating people, operating leases guys. He added that Mihin Lanka will be operated as a separate company if offered the bid and will recruit all those who lost their jobs due to the Mihin Lanka merger with Sri Lankan Airlines. Can you sack anybody in a national airline in another country and just get away? They sack 400 Mihin Air people. But where do does a Sri Lankan airline or Mihin Airlines staff go? They are professional people, they know where to go. That's why I'm fighting for them. 400 have lost their jobs. Yeah, of course, I have to take them back. You see, you all didn't understand. You need a budget carrier to operate. 
with an international carrier. Okay. Is, which is a feeder service. That's what happened to Malaysian Airlines. They let Derek go. Air Asia caught the business. Okay. Yeah, we'll unmerge, unmerge. We'll unmerge. We'll unmerge. They have the AOC, so we'll unmerge. However, he went on to say that there will be a change of heads in the present top management if he gets to operate the airline. When we own 70% of the airline, what, what do you want us to do? Sit in the back seat and let somebody run it? Obviously, we sit in the front seat because we are management control. So we have to know where to put the right pen to the right job. When I talk to them, they will know what they can do best and will give them a top job. That they like, these aviators like to do their, their part. You know, when, when I take and put my brother somewhere and and my mother somewhere and my somebody somewhere, it won't happen. Even, for, for example, even our CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines, he's A380 commander. If you can get him into our fleet and even give him to command it, it's fine. That's his job. He, uh, the, 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 he's a good man, but he's in the wrong job. Minister of Plantation Industries Navin Disanayaka says Sri Lankan tea industry is emerging out of tough times and heading to a better future. The minister said this joining celebrations of the 150 years of Ceylon tea held at the Sri Lanka Tea Board. For over 100 years, Ceylon tea contributed significantly to sustain and strengthen the Sri Lankan economy. Scottish national James Taylor holds the reputation for developing tea as the first commercial plantation in Ceylon and commenced and manufactured of tea at Lula Kondera Estate in Hevahata. Lula Kondura Estate is known to be the first patch of tea planted after the failure of coffee plantation in Ceylon. With the success of the Lula Kondura plantation, James Taylor, who was in charge of the plantation at that time, remains forever remembered in the century-old history of Ceylon tea. Other Derana spoke to one among the pioneers who had contributed to tea plantation in Sri Lanka. Considered the last English tea planter in then Ceylon, Peter Hooper, has made a significant contribution to Sri Lanka's largest foreign exchange earning industry. Well, um, at, at when I started, uh, Sri Lanka was the leading tea producing country in the world. But due to a whole lot of reasons, other countries have exceeded our yields and uh, our markets. So I would say these are the biggest changes. And the other thing I see, labor were very, the workers were very keen to work on estates. 60 years ago. Now they're not a key, at all keen working on estates. They want jobs outside the estate. Celebrating 150th year of Ceylon tea, the first ever monument that the state has built in recognition of the first tea planter James Taylor was unveiled by Minister of Plantation Industries Navin Disanayaka. As you know, we have endured a lot. We have gone through tough times and we are still going through a tough time. Uh, the industry knows about uh, rough patches. Uh, the, it was earlier the prices that were severely depressed, but now the production is also affected because of the drought and other various issues. So I hope that in the future to come that we can address all these issues that are there. The issue of glyphosate was highly unnecessary. I felt that uh, that was a policy that we should not have taken, especially for the tea industry. I understand the concerns of environmentalists and other uh, groups uh, for the ban. I really do. I understand that. But I don't think that you cannot have commercial agriculture with, uh, without any weed size. We will be also undertaking the 150-year uh, marketing campaign, global marketing campaign, which we have funds for. And I want to see that the funds are properly utilized in this marketing campaign. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, Rohan Pethiagoda, also speaking to other Dharana, expressed future expectations of Sri Lankan tea industry. I think the tea industry is doing very well this year with the prices. We have, have really good prices this year. But the problem we're having is that because of the drought and the lack of weedicides and some problems earlier with fertilizer, the tea crop has fallen very significantly by almost 15% over the last year. At a separate celebration in lieu of 150 years of Ceylon tea, chairman of the Colombo Tea Traders Association, Anselm Pereira, spoke about the industry's journey thus far. When we started tea here, we supplied tea as a commodity. We didn't supply tea as a finished product. Today, about 40% of our product goes as a finished product, ready to drink on the rack. But if you look at bulk part of the trade, we still need the bulk because we cannot pack all 350 or 300 million kilos of our tea and export it in finished product because around the world, there are many places, many countries that have 
facilities to Pakti. Also in business news, economic reform specialist Professor Rohan Samarajiva welcomed the European Union proposal to grant the GSP Plus facility to Sri Lanka once again. The professor said that the concessions will improve the Sri Lankan economy and allow exporters to easily compete in the world market. Without question, the GSP Plus facility to the European Union is a good thing for Sri Lanka. There's a bicycle factory with an investment of 4 million US dollars and 250 employees, which has already received investment from Indian and Bangladeshi investors in anticipation of the GSP Plus agreement. They will invest another 20 million US dollars and increase employment from 250 to 1,000 people. This is just illustrative of the kinds of benefits that we walked away from in 2010 and that we will enjoy if we get this agreement back. Professor Samarajiva went on to comment on concerns raised by certain parties regarding the 27 conventions that Sri Lanka is required to comply with in order to regain GSP+. Now the issue is, what are these international treaties? Are these treaties that we are being asked to enter into anew? No. These are treaties that Sri Lanka, independently of the GSP Plus agreement, has entered into in the past. Now, of course, we have a habit of entering into treaties and not complying fully with them. Now, they have, for example, pointed out the issue of uh, the marriage age of Muslim women, which I personally believe there should not be different marriage ages for people of different ethnicities. Now, I don't see any, any harm in this uh, doing anything bad to our country or to our sovereignty. I think it is a good thing that we have a uniformity of personal laws. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that anybody has to, to legalize homosexuality. I think it's a question of decriminalizing something that has been put into the penal code by the colonial powers. And I think it's high time that we took it off from the penal code, but I do not think that it is something that is being compelled by the European Union and nobody has the right to compel us to do things like that anyway. Under the stock market now, Sri Lanka equities were lower at the close today as losses in the healthcare, land and property and trading sectors propelled shares lower. At the close, the stock, uh, Colombo Stock Exchange all share declined 0.33%. Here's Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange with the day's trading. The benchmark all share price index lost 20.11 points to close at 6,164.9 while the S&P Sri Lanka 20 index lost 4.66 points to close at 3,492.61. The turnover was 1.5 billion rupees with 19.9 million shares change in hands in 2,306 trades. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 2,717.648 billion rupees. Top 5 gainers of the day were Adam Investments, Raigam Sultans, Andana Hotels, Singer Hospitals and Serendip Engineering, while the top five losers were Millennium Housing Developers, Serendip Hotels, Nanvotin, First Capital Holdings, Amana Life and Browns Investments. Today's foreign purchases were 580.64 million rupees and foreign sales were 736.92 million rupees. There were 11 crossings and the crossings turnovers 1.1 billion rupees. The Sri Lankan rupee traded weaker today due to dollar demand from importers while moral suasion by the central bank prevented a further fall in the currency. The rupee has been under pressure due to rising imports and net selling of government securities by foreign investors with the central bank adjusting the spot rupee reference rate to a record low of 150 rupees and 15 cents against the dollar. Now here's a look at today's buying and selling rates for the Sri Lankan rupee against foreign currencies.
On sports tonight, defending champion Novak Djokovic suffered a shock defeat by world number 117 Dennis Istamin in the second round of the Australian Open. It is the first time since 2008 in Wimbledon that Djokovic lost in the second round of a Grand Slam championship and offers Dennis Murray the easy way to win his first Australian Open tournament. The six-time Australian Open winner Novak Djokovic struggled for rhythm and lost against world number 117 Dennis Istomin after 4 hours and 48 minutes game. The result leaves world number one Andy Murray as favourite to win his first Australian Open title in Melbourne after he lost four finals against Djokovic in the last seven years. At the women's draw, Britain's Joanna Conta is true to the Australian Open's third round by beating Noami Osaka. In international news, the Italian rescue official has said that a number of people have been killed after a small hotel was hit by an avalanche in the city of Frindola. The origin of the catastrophe is suspected in an earthquake that hit the region yesterday. After rescue personnel battled overnight to reach the hotel, the head of the team now confirmed that there are up to 30 deaths suspected under the mass of snow. After the roof of the hotel partly collapsed, the residents of the city called for emergency services. Hampered by a snowstorm and blocked roads, the first security member reached the hotel on skis only hours after the accident happened. The region of central Italy was hit by a succession of four earthquakes on Wednesday, which are suspected to be the origin of the catastrophe. It is the same region that was hit by a series of earthquakes in August 2016 that promoted the death of 298 people. Well, in his last press conference as President of the United States, Barack Obama shared hope as well as optimism for the future of his country. The outgoing president also talked about his future plans and gave some last advice for Donald Trump. President Barack Obama started his last press conference by sending wishes and prayers to the former U.S. President George H.W. Bush and his wife after both have been moved to a hospital on Wednesday. Furthermore, he spoke about his own future and said that he will take a break to spend time with his family, but concreted at the same time that he also has further political plans for his future. I want to do some writing. I want to... Well, before we end the news tonight, let's quickly take a look at the weather. Showers, particularly in the northern and eastern parts of the island, can be expected from tomorrow. Several spells could be occurred in the north, north central and eastern and Uwa provinces and in the Hambantara district. Showers or thunder showers will occur at a few places in the central, Sabaragamu and southern provinces after 2 p.m. Misty conditions can be expected at some places of the island during the morning, particularly in the western Sabragamu, southern and central provinces. Fairly strong winds at times about 50 km per hour can be expected over the country. Well, that's a wrap of tonight's news on Other Than a 24 7. Thank you very much for your company. For the very latest 24 hours a day, just log on to www.otherthanana.lk or like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Mahesh Johnny. Good night. This is Other Derna, and you're watching Other Derna 24 7.